It's time to begin our installation of Ubuntu Desktop 14. If you're performing a physical installation, now is the time to insert the DVD into the optical drive or the USB thumb drive into the USB port of the physical computer where you would like to install Ubuntu Desktop 14. However, if like me you are performing a virtual installation, then you should already have a virtual machine set up as I showed you in the previous module. Here you can see my virtual machine, Ubuntu Desktop 2. In order to start the virtual machine, we simply double click on it. This will bring up a new window. If it's the first time that you are starting the virtual machine, then you will likely see a smaller window here, which will ask you to specify which type of media or medium you would like to boot from. If you are performing an ISO installation, you can click that Browse button. Or, if like me, you have already started the virtual machine and that dialog box is not up, you can simply click on Devices, and then Optical Drives, and then choose Disk Image. This will allow us to browse for the ISO image that we want to use to install Ubuntu Desktop 14. I will browse to Ubuntu 14 desktop and then the ISO image file that I have here and select open. I'm going to need to reboot the machine. You can double check here that under devices, optical drives, the ISO image file is selected. And now we want to reboot this machine. So we can simply go to machine and then reset. This will boot us in to our installation and we'll be given two basic options. We'll be given the option to run off of this ISO image a live CD, live DVD, that is a live copy of Ubuntu, or to install the operating system. And of course, we want to select the installation option. Here you can see the options that we're given. Try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. We, of course, want to install it, and so we will select that button. Now, we need at least 6.5 gigabytes of available drive space. That's why previously I told you in setting up a virtual machine, you would need at least 8 gigabytes on your virtual disk image. You also, it's preferred that you would be connected to the Internet, although you do not have to be connected to the Internet in order to install Ubuntu. You can then configure the network later, but you won't be able to download updates while installing which is preferable. So what we're going to do is connect our network first through VirtualBox. Now, if you're performing a physical installation here, you would want to make sure that your Ethernet cable is securely connected to the back of the computer, at which point you should see a green check mark here. If you have a wireless network set up on that computer, then you can come up here you can click on the little up and down button, or you may see a grayed out wireless network icon. You can see that networking is enabled, and you can choose which network you would like to connect to. Now, I don't have any wireless options here because I'm running in a virtual box environment, and so it's considering it a wired network. What I will need to do is go to Machine and then Settings. You'll need to do this as well if you have a gray X next to connected to the Internet. Next, we'll go to Network and we'll change this drop-down to Bridged Adapter. You should then see a name here, and usually the first one that comes up will be correct. However, if you have uh, multiple adapters, then you may have to select them manually there. After that's done, click OK, and we should see this gray X change now to a green check mark. You can see up here this uh, wireless uh, icon there came on for a moment and then the up down arrows and now we see a green check mark. Now we can select to download updates while installing which again is optional but preferred and we can also choose whether or not to install third-party software. Uh, some of this is related to mp3 players and whatnot as it says down here and we do want to install that third-party software. Go ahead and select continue now that we are connected to the internet and have both check marks checked. And we'll need to select which disk we want to install Ubuntu on. 
We want to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. We're using that virtual disk image. Now, of course, if you're performing a physical installation, make sure that you know what drive you want to install Ubuntu on, what drive or partition. You can select Install Now, and it will go ahead and give you a warning. It's going to let you know what is going to happen to the particular disk that you'll be modifying. Make sure that you're okay with that, and then you can select Continue. Now, notice that we did not encrypt the Ubuntu installation, and we didn't set up LVM. LVM is a logical volume manager, and it's just not something that we're going to cover in this course. It's a way in which you can logically link different hard drives and partitions together in order to uh, achieve some pretty cool results. Uh, we're not going to go into that detail here as this is a course for beginners. Continuing on with our installation, we'll need to select our time zone. I'm going to type in Chicago here. Not that I'm located in Chicago, but I'm located in Chicago time in the United States. And so I will select that here, Chicago time, United States, and hit continue. Here you can select your keyboard layout, which for me is English US. And now we can give some user credentials here. Your name, which is not the username, but the actual name that will be attached to the account. The computer name, which in this case is OK, Cody dash virtual box is fine. Here we can specify a username, and I do recommend that your username is short and all lowercase letters. That's just going to make things a little bit easier as we begin to dig into the terminal. And please do select a secure password for your installation, as that is always a smart practice. Now, rather than log in automatically, we will require a password to log in. Please make sure that you check this uh, so that we can check out a few options. Uh, we could do that by logging out, but in order to follow along, please make sure that you select require my password to log in. And we do not need to encrypt our home folder, so we won't do that. And we can select continue. Now that we've completed this basic configuration, the operating system will begin to install, and you can see its progress down here. We can get more detailed information about the progress of our installation by clicking on this little triangle here, and it will drop down a little terminal window that's telling us more specifically what the installer is doing. Once this completes, we'll move on to final configurations and boot in to our new operating system. The installation is now complete. We can select Restart Now and boot into our new operating system.